Good morning. Happy Monday. It is Monday, isn't it? The hour of convening has arrived and the Senate will come to order. I'd ask that all unauthorized guests exit our beautiful chamber. And it is my distinct honor to recognize the well-rested senator who's traveled all the way from Chickamauga to be with us today. It's a wonderful day in our state capital. It is a beautiful day. It's like spring is near to here, but beware. Winter still is going to show up here. You know, it's easy to find out in this chamber who your friends are and who your enemies are, sometimes quicker than you really expected. But you never forget. But Mr. President, today is National Peanut Cluster Day. The senator from the 7th told me because he loves peanuts. And the stock exchange was founded in 1817. I think you were a visitor there and recently, or last year. The journal's been read and found to be correct. Thank you, Senator. Is there objection to dispensing with the reading of the journal? The chair hears none, and the reading of the journal is dispensed with. Is there objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none, and the journal is confirmed. All senators who have bills and resolutions, please bring them up to the secretary's desk at this time. Mr. Secretary, first reading of Senate bills and resolutions, please. Senate Bill 281 by Senator Robertson of the 29th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 16 of Title 47 of the OCGA, leading to the Sheriff's Retirement Fund of Georgia so as to provide for an increase in dues. Retirement. Senate Bill 282 by Senators Anderson of the 24th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act creating a Board of Elections and Registration for Lincoln County approved April 4, 1990. State and local government. Senate Bill 283 by Senators Anderson of the 24th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to reconstitute and reestablish the Board of Elections and Registration for Lincoln State County. State and local government. Senate Resolution 201 by Senators Miller of the 49th and others, a resolution recognizing and commending SK Innovation and for other purposes. Rules. This completes the order, Mr. President. First reading and reference of House bills, please. House Bill 44 by Representatives Cantrell of the 22nd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 1 of Title 50 of the OCGA relating to general provisions relative to state government so as to provide that this state shall observe daylight savings time year round to provide Government for oversight. House Bill 92 by Representatives Gamble of the 15th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Code Section 31-10-25 of the OCGA relating to disclosure of information contained in vital records and transfer Government oversight. House Bill 302 by Representatives Momtahan of the 17th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 13 of Title 48 of the OCGA. Finance. And House Bill 316 by Representative Stevens of the 164th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Code Section 26-4-82 of the OCGA, leading to duties requiring professional Health judgment. and Human Services. House Bill 328 by Representatives Montaham of the 17th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 5 of Title 46 of the OCGA, leading to telephone services, general provision. Regulated industries. House Bill 333 by Representative Estration of the 104th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 5 of Title 21 of the OCGA, leading to ethics and government so as to revise the powers and duties of the Georgia government. Ethics. House Bill 364 by Representatives Collins of the 68th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Code Section 43-38-7 of the OCGA relating to licensing of armed employees of private detective and private Public safety. House Bill 369 by Representatives Powell of the 32nd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 34 of Title 43 of the OCGA relating to phys physicians assistance. Health and Human Services. House Bill 450 by Representatives Newton of the 123rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 31-2A-18 of the OCGA relating to low THC oil. Health and Human Services. House Bill 451 by Representatives Lumsden of the 12th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend part one of article two of chapter five of title 48 of the OCGA relating to property tax exemption so as to revive Finance. The house Bill 533 by Representatives Yerda of the 152nd, a bill to be entitled an act to create the City of Sylvester Public Facilities Authority to provide for a short State and local government. House Bill 554 by Representatives Gunter of the 8th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 9 of Chapter 14 of Title 44 of the OCJ, leading to list pendants. So as to revise. Judiciary. House Bill 577 by Representative Carpenter of the 4th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 32 and Code Section 40-6-181 of the OCGA relating to highways, bridges, and ferries and maximum. Transportation. 
House Bill 591 by Representatives Hogan of the 179th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 37 of the OCGA relating to mental health so as to authorize marriage and family therapists to perform certain Judiciary. acts. Judiciary. House Bill 601 by Representative Stevens of the 164th, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 16 of the OCGA relating to crimes and offenses so as to provide that low THC oil marijuana. Regulated industries. House Bill 604 by Representative Scoggins of the 14th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to provide a homestead exemption from Bartow County School District ad valorem taxes for educational purposes in the amount of $60,000. State and local government. House Bill 605 by Representatives Cooper of the 43rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 8 of Title 31 of the OCJ relating to care and protection of indigent and elderly patients so as to provide for authorized electronic monitoring and long-term care facilities to provide for definitions to provide consent requirements. Health and Human Services. House Bill 606 by Representatives Nix of the 69th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Code Section 20-3-519 of the OCJ relating to definitions regarding HOPE scholarships and grants. Higher education. House Bill 620 by Representatives Leverett of the 33rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 29, Chapter 4 of Title 51 and Article 6 of Chapter 6 of Title 53 of the OCJ leading to guardian and ward, wrongful death and bond, respectively, so as to clarify. Judiciary. House Bill 623 by Representatives Ridley of the 6th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to provide a new charter for the town of Cotuda to provide for related matters to repeal state a state and local government. House Bill 625 by Representatives Rhodes of the 120th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to create the Tri County Natural Gas Authority to provide for related matters to repeal state and local government. Um, House Bill 634 by Representative Mathis of the 144th, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act to provide that the judge of probate court of Wilkinson County shall serve as chief magistrate. State and local government. Um, House Bill 645 by Representatives Gravely of the 67th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 9 of Chapter 12 of Title 16 of the OCGA, leading to access to medical cannabis so as to update Health and Human Services. House Bill 647 by Representative Smith of the 133rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Part 1 of Article 2 of Chapter 8 of Title 12 of the OCGA, leading to general provisions relative to solid waste management so as to Natural provide resources. House Bill 658 by Representative Powell of the 32nd, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act to create the Franklin Hart Airport Authority, approved April 1st, 1990. State and local government. This completes the order, Mr. President. Secretary will now read a message from the governor for us. March 5th, 2021, dear Lieutenant Governor Gun Duncan, the following appointment to the Board of Juvenile Justice requires Senate confirmation. This information is submitted pursuant to Senate Rules 3-3.1 at SEC. So if we provide you with any additional information to assist your office in the confirmation process, please let us know. Sandra Heath Taylor from Tro of Troop County for the Board of Juvenile Justice. Thank you for your assistance, sincerely. Governor Brian Kemp from the state of Georgia. The chair assigns those appointments to the Committee on Assignments. Secretary will now read reports of standing committees. And they have none. Secretary will now read bills and resolutions for the second time. House Bill 367 by Representative Parrish of the 158th and others. Controlled substances, Schedule 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 change certain provisions. This completes the order, Mr. President. It's now time for our morning roll call. It's now time for our morning roll call. Are there any motions to excuse? Chair recognizes the Senator from the 33rd. Good morning, Mr. President, and good morning, y'all. Uh, I want to ask for unanimous consent to excuse the senators from the following district, 13, 50, 55, 42, 22, 2, 36, 35, 
and 38. That used to be our football signals back in the day for business outside the Capitol. Sounds like the lotto numbers. <laughs> Without objection, the also, senators from the 13th, 50th, 50. Also, 50 sir, I'd like to welcome back the senator from the 19th. Without objection, the senators from the 13th, 50th, 55th, 35th, 38th, 42nd, 22nd, 2nd, and 36th are excused. Chair recognizes the senator from the 15th, the dean. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask unanimous consent to excuse the senator from the 2nd. Without objection, the senator from the 2nd is excused. The chair recognizes the senator from the 47th. Thank you, Mr. President. Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Is the senator from the 33rd known as the excuse senator? <laughs> That's for y'all to determine on your own. See what I did there? All right, is there any more motions to excuse? The chair sees none. The secretary will call the roll of senators. Signify your presence by voting the A switch. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted your attendance? Have all senators voted your attendance? Got a thumbs up from the crowd or from the hallway? Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. It's now time for a morning devotional, and I would ask that all senators please take your seats and cease all audible conversations, and doorkeepers secure the chamber at this time. I'd like to recognize our pro tem to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance and to introduce to us our Chaplain of the Day. Thank you, Mr. President. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the Georgia flag. I pledge allegiance to the Georgia flag and the principles for which it stands wisdom, justice, moderation. Again, thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate the opportunity to introduce our chaplain of the day. Our chaplain of the day is a, is a great encourager. He is a, a young man that, that mentors, that coaches, that models for young people in our community in Gainesville and Hall County and all over Northeast Georgia. He is the son of a pastor uh, his father, David, has been a pastor at Lanier Christian Church for 45 years. Uh, John uh, Simpson serves as assistant head of school for Lakeview Academy in Gainesville, Georgia. He has been in that role for 16 years. About 10 or 12 years ago, John founded a ministry on Lake Lanier uh, in Center Marina, and it has uh, started as a fledgling uh, worship service to a robust and uh, regularly attended uh, worship service by people all over North Georgia, not just on the lake, but off the lake. You can come there by boat or by car. You can swim, you can canoe, whatever you want to do, just get to his church. He'll, and I assure you that you will hear a message that is uh, profound and powerful. Uh, John's wife, uh, Ashley, uh, they have a daughter, Mary Evan. And John has just been a great influence on so many young people in our community. 
And I would ask you to give him your attention this morning, and I know you'll find it fruitful. Thank you. Well, good morning, and uh, I'm thankful for uh, Senator Miller inviting me, and uh, also thank you, Lieutenant uh, Governor. And, and good morning to all of you guys, as it is the morning, and you've got a, a busy day ahead of you, so I promise you, as uh, Butch said, I'm the son of a preacher uh, who's here with me today, David Simpson, and I know what it's like to listen to a long message, so it will be short and sweet, I promise. So listen up. The 23rd Psalm that David wrote says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Most of us have heard this psalm before, the 23rd Psalm. Most of us have. But I want you to reflect back on, on when you were elected senator. Senator for the state of Georgia. I mean, it felt really good that your community actually would elect you to be the senator of this state. I mean, you felt like you were on cloud nine. It just was a wonderful, wonderful feeling, such a, such a high honor. And then you started being the senator for this wonderful state, and you really understood what it felt like to be a senator. And behind that that politician smile was some deep heartache. Sometimes it felt like you were just in a, a valley. I mean, tough times. I mean, people were asking some things that you just simply didn't think you could do. But the valley, in the valley, maybe in the valley of your marriage, maybe in the valley as a spouse, maybe in the, in the, in the valley as a, as a parent with your child, maybe in the valley at work, maybe in the valley in this chamber right here. Valleys. Oh, the valley. But if you look in the 23rd Psalm in the 4th verse there, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley. It doesn't say, yea, though I'm in the valley. It says, yea, though I walk through the valley. Now, as a senator, you know, I, I, I tell you, I, I see Butch Miller often, and I absolutely love the man and respect him, but he's always walking. He's got that walking piece down. And so do you. We're always on the move. What's the next bill? What's the next thing? What is the next thing that I can do in my community? Yea, though I walk. But when we walk, who are we walking through the valley with? And I'm here to tell you the truth today, folks, that I walk through the valley with Jesus. He wants to walk through the valley with you. Yeah, it's a valley, but we're walking through it. And he loves you just the way that you are, but he refuses to leave you that way. If he had a refrigerator, your face would be right in the center of that refrigerator. He loves you. He cares for you. And because Jesus wants to walk through the valley with you, why don't this morning... Why don't you reflect and look to him for help? Instead of trying to handle it all on your own, why don't you look to Jesus? Yea, though I walk through the valley. When you read the 23rd Psalm, when you get to verse 4, maybe you'll look at that verse 4 a little bit differently and say, oh, I've always heard that psalm as a child. But maybe when you're in the valleys of life, you realize, God, help me get through that valley. And when you get through the valley, 
Maybe we can enjoy God on the mountaintops, but may we get to know him intimately in the valleys. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, today we ask that you allow us to make decisions to help the people of the state of Georgia. I pray a special blessing upon these men and women who are in this chamber right now. I pray a special blessing over the whole capital state of Georgia, our governor, our lieutenant governor, our senators, our representatives. God, guide them, lead them, Father. Lord, we love you, and we're so thankful for the many blessings you have given us. We ask that we never turn from you, that you will lead us through any and everything you have us do for your honor and your glory. For it is in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John.
All right, the Senate will... Microphone works this morning really well. Are there any unanimous consents? Does any senator wish to rise on a point of personal privilege? Chair recognizes the senator from the 34th. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. I rise to recognize women across the globe. I am sharing this history of wearing the color purple. It signifies justice and dignity. The color green symbolizes hope. Historically, the combination of purple and green and white to symbolize women equality originated from the Women's Society of the Political Union in the UK in 1908. And because this is Women History Month, and globally we want to recognize all women, and of course, women everywhere really feel womanized when they are wearing the pearls. That's a part of the uniqueness of being a woman. And Mr. President, in honor of all women globally, I say thank you for all that you are doing wherever you are. I yield the well. Thank you, Senator. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 40th for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. Today, on International Women's Day, I think about my grandmother, who was 26 years old when she and all American women gained the right to vote. She then later sent her only son off to fight in World War II, not knowing if she would ever hold him again. My grandmother, an active American Legion volunteer, loved her country, and I expect that she would want me to stand before you today and cry foul. Because when it comes to elections, the very foundation of our democracy, you don't change the rules because you lost. We just held two elections with the highest voter turnout in Georgia's history hard-working election officials were able to meet the increased demand during a pandemic because of the voting options that were offered. Early in-person, absentee, drop boxes, vote by mail, and day of voting. We ought to be celebrating our success, but instead, a defeated president chose to try to take his country down with him by spreading lies about voter fraud. As Mark Twain said, a lie can travel halfway around the world while truth is putting on its shoes. These lies are now stated as excuses for bills we are voting on today, bills that take voting options away and make it harder to vote. But lies can backfire. Voters chose to take their vote by mail or their absentee ballots to a drop box during a pandemic. Take that option away and other options, and they are not going to be happy about it. And these people, when they get mad, they get organized. They've been at it for over four years now, and your actions are providing them with the motivation to keep going. We will not let our people stop voting. Take away automatic voter registration at driver services, we'll register voters. Take away vote by mail, we'll vote in person. Require hard to obtain ID, we'll help them get it. Take away Sunday voting, we'll vote on Saturday. We have no shortage of real problems to address right now in this chamber. Five, uh, five, 
500,000 people without health care, a dysfunctional Department of Labor, mental health needs that have gone, treatable mental health needs that have gone untreated, and a crisis in our corrections facility. What a shame that we've chosen to focus on problems that don't even exist. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the well. Chair recognizes the senator from the 21st for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. I know we got a long day, so I'll be brief. But I come to you today because I'm really upset. I'm mad. But really, I'm heartbroken with the increase in the crime in our capital city. This is the city too busy to hate. We're the number one state to do business. And I'm going to tell you that crime better stop, or we will not get another NBA All-Star game. We will not get another Super Bowl and we will no longer be the number one state to do business in. As we come out of COVID-19, the convention business will come back. But again, if we do not get this crime under control, that World Congress Center will become an empty warehouse. Everyone in this chamber should be outraged with this increase in crime in our capital city. Mr. President, I yield the will. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 15th for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise today to commemorate and remember some brave soldiers and Marines who fought in Vietnam. To be more precise about it, at 600 on March 8th, 1965, Rear Admiral Donald Wolzett, commander of the 7th Fleet's Amphibious Task Force, issued the traditional order to land the task force. Soon afterward, Vancouver LPD-2, the Henrico, which I was aboard, began disembarking Marines for the movement ashore. When the 3rd Battalion, 9th Marines crossed the beach between 0902 and 0918, it became the first battalion-sized American ground combat unit deployed ashore in the extended Southeast Asia conflict. The landing of the 9th Marine Expeditionary Brigade in Da Nang of 1965 marked the beginning of the large-scale Marine involvement in Vietnam. Even before the full 9th Marine Force landed, they were considering using these Marines and following Army units in active operations against the Viet Cong. The passive defense mission was shelved soon after on March, April 1st, 1965, when President Johnson authorized the Marines not just to be shot at, but to shoot back. By summer 1968, after the enemy Tet Offensive, Marine Corps strength in Vietnam rose to a peak of about 85,000. The Marine withdrawal began in 1969 as the South Vietnamese began to assume a larger role in the fighting. The last ground forces were out of Vietnam by June 1971. The Vietnam War, longest in the history of the Marine Corps, exacted a high cost as well, with over 13,000 Marines killed and a total of 58,000 combat troops and soldiers and women and nurses were killed in that country during this long conflict. That was a bloody time. Then 13,000 miles away, to the west, another battle was underway, and it had turned bloody too. It was defined as the bloody Sunday in the struggle called the Civil Rights Movement. The struggle for dignity, civil rights, and the right to vote, and a pursuit of freedom. This is all wrapped up in what our soldiers do, what our sailors do, what our Marines do, what our air people do, what our Coast Guard people do. It's what we are about in, our, in the country. We fight for the right for people to say they don't want to fight. We fight for the right to people who say they don't want to serve. It, it is all wrapped up into the right of free speech. Thank you very much. I yield the well, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 16th for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. I wanted to introduce our doctor of the day, Dr. Chris Walsh. 
is an orthopedic surgeon with resurgence orthopedics and specializes in hand and elbow. He received his medical degree from the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and completed his residency at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. He serves on the board of the Georgia Orthopedic Society and is past president of the Georgia Society of Ambulatory Surgical Centers and serves as a Physician's Performance Enhancement Committee at Piedmont Fayette Hospital. Dr. Walsh served in the U.S. Navy Reserves and was an active duty baton surgeon for the 2nd Marine Division where he was deployed to Operation Desert Shield in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. And we want to thank him for his service and for being here for us today in case any of us need him. So thank you very much, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 29th for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank my brother from, the, uh, from District 21 for discussing the issues that occurred this weekend. And in saying that, I also want you just to keep in mind the, uh, my brother, the Georgia State Trooper that was injured this weekend after being drugged by a vehicle uh, here in Atlanta on a traffic stop. Uh, we're wishing him a speedy recovery. My understanding is he's got some staples in his, in his head, but, but he should recover and be okay. And uh, I wanna thank all of the state agencies that continue to come in and support the city of Atlanta during this chaos and during their inability to get a grip on crime. Thank you, Mr. President, I yield the well. You've got a consent calendar of privileged resolutions before you. Does any Senator wish to remove a resolution from the consent calendar? Chair sees none. Is there objection to adoption of the resolutions on the consent calendar? The chair hears none. The resolutions on the consent calendar are adopted. Are there any motions to withdraw and commit? Chair sees none. Chair recognizes the majority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the following bills or resolutions be engrossed. Senate Bill 213, Senate Bill 241, Senate Resolution 100, Senate Bill 62, Senate Bill 69, Senate Bill 71, Senate Bill 72, Senate Bill 74, Senate Bill 93, Senate Bill 141, Senate Bill 178, Senate Bill 232, Senate Bill 202, Senate Bill 199, and Senate Bill 253. The Majority Leader has moved to engross a list of bills on the rules calendar. Is there objection? Yes. There is objection. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the captions? Senate Bill 213 by Senator Harper of the 7th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 10 of Chapter 2 of Title 20 of the OCGA, leading to contracts and purchases by public schools so as to provide for payment on guaranteed energy saving contracts and for other purposes. Senate Bill 241 by Senator Dugan of the 30th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to comprehensively revise elections and votings to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the OCGA, leading to elections and primaries generally so as to provide for the establishment of a voter intimidation and illegal election activities hotline and for other purposes. Senate Resolution 100 by Senator Gooch of the 51st and others, a resolution proposing an amendment to the Constitution so as to provide for statewide grand juries, to provide for the jurisdiction powers and duties of statewide grand juries, to authorize the General Assembly and for other purposes. Senate Bill 62 by Senator Tippins of the 37th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the OCGA, leading to elections and primaries generally so as to provide that the name and designation of the precinct appears on every ballot, to provide for the use of holographic security devices on ballots, to provide for the storage and retention of absentee ballots by precinct with chain of custody, and for other purposes. Senate Bill 69 by Senator Mullis of the 53rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the OCGA, relating to primaries and elections generally, so as to provide that persons desiring to register to vote or update their voter registration through an application and for other purposes. 
Senate Bill 71 by Senator Mullis of the 53rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the OCJ, leading to election to primaries generally, so as to revise the definition of absentee elector to provide for reasons for voting by absentee ballot and for other purposes. Senate Bill 72 by Senator Mullis of the 53rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the OCJ, relating to elections and primaries generally, so as to provide that county registrars shall obtain monthly from the coroner, judge of the probate court and funeral homes in the county identifying information and for other purposes. Okay. Senate Bill 74 by Senator Mullis of the 53rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the OCGA relating to elections and primaries generally so as to revise the ability of poll watchers at tabulating centers to observe the, voting, the vote counting process and for other purposes. Senate Bill 93 by Senator Robertson, the 29th, and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the OCJ, leading to elections and primaries generally, so as to provide for the use of portable and movable polling facilities in certain circumstances and for other purposes. Senate Bill 141 by Senator Anna Vitarte of the 31st and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the OCJ, leading to elections and primaries generally, so as to provide for immediate counting and tabulation of ballots after the close of polls and for other purposes. Senate Bill 178 by Senator Mullis of the 53rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the OCJ, leading to elections and primaries generally so as to provide that absentee ballot applications shall not be sent by the Secretary of State or by county or municipal election official and for other purposes. Senate Bill 202 by Senator Burns of the 23rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the OCJ relating to elections and primaries generally so as to provide that persons or entities that mail absentee ballot applications shall mail such applications only to eligible registered electors who have not already been requested and for other purposes. Senate Bill 232 by Senator Harbin of the 16th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the OCJ relating to primaries and elections generally so as to require unique barcodes on individual absentee ballots to revise provisions regarding the preparation and mailing of absentee ballot envelopes to provide an oath for registrars and absentee ballot clerks opening and verifying absentee ballots and for other purposes. Senate Bill 199 by Senator Mullis of the 53rd, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 11 of Title 48 of the OCGA leading to taxes on tobacco and vaping products so as to permit the sale and delivery of tobacco products, alternative nicotine products and vapor products by licensed manufacturers located outside of this state and for other purposes. Senate Bill 253 by Senator Merritt of the 9th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 21 of the OCJ, leading to elections and primaries generally so as to provide for notice when polling places are relocated and for other purposes. This completes the order, Mr. President. Would the majority leader like to speak to his motion to engross? Would the minority leader like to speak to her objection? She waves. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against? Chair recognize. What purpose does the senator from the 42nd rise? Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Would it be possible for the secretary to read off the list again because I missed a few of them and they're not all up on the board? I would like to know, have a complete list of which ones are engrossed. It's so currently the, the, the list to engross is going to be divided into two lists because the board isn't big enough. So we can get you a list uh, up that's here if, if you want to come up. That's fine. I just thought this was one vote on all of them, that's so right. that's why I was This asking. is for one batch because we can only put 15 on the board. Seven. S seven. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. The question is on the motion from the majority leader to engross the bills on the rules calendar that were reported from the Committee on Ethics and Finance. We'll take uh, first action will be on the motion to engross Senate Bills 213, 241, 100, 62, 69, 71, 72. All those in favor of the motion to engross will vote yay. Opposed, nay. The Secretary will unlock the machine.
Have all senators voted? Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the motion, the yeas are 34, the nays are 19, and Senate Bills 213, 241, 162, 69, 71, and 72 are engrossed. We'll now proceed to vote on the motion to engross the remainder of the bills that we can fit on the board. Senate Bills 74, 93, 141, 178, 202, 232, 199, and Senate Bills 253. The question is on the motion to engross. All those in favor of the motion to engross the previously mentioned bills uh, will vote yay, opposed nay. The Secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? We got one coming. We'll wait. Don't pull a hamstring. It's early. It's only the first inning. All right. Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the motion, the yeas are 34, the nays are 19. And Senate Bills 74, 93, 141, 178, 202, 232, 199, and 253 are engrossed. All right, we're now going to move on to the rules calendar. We're going to move on to the rules calendar. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of Senate Bill 256? Senate Bill 256 by Senator Burke of the 11th and others, a bill to be entitled in a bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 12, Code Section 16-12-4, Code Section 19-11-9, Chapter 2 of Title 26, Title 31, and Code Section 43-18-75 of the OCJ relating to conversation and natural resources, cruelty to animals, location, and absent parents by department standards, labeling and alteration of food, health, and inspections, suspension, or revocation of license, and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Health and Human Services recommends that this bill do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Senator Watson of the First. Health and Human Services offering the following substitute to Senate Bill 256, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 3 of Title 31 of the OCGA, leading to county boards of health so as to clarify the selection of district health directors by the Commissioner of Public Health and for other purposes. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 11th to speak to Senate Bill 256. Thank you, Mr. President, and good morning, everyone. Senate Bill 256 allows the commissioners to uh, select a district health director for each district, and that uh, 
district health director is the CEO of the uh, lo local health districts. That's all it does. Two pager. Appreciate your support. I yield the well if there are no questions, Mr. President. You have no questions. Requested to speak. Would you like to speak? Chair recognizes the senator from the 26th to speak to the measure. He waves. Oh. Chair does recognize the senator from the 26th. Thank you, Mr. President, the ladies and gentlemen of the Senate. I'm here because I, I've gotten nothing but phone calls all weekend from health to from county commissioners that said that 256 would take full control of their public health. They would take full control. In Bibb County, they called me. Uh, we just spent about a half a million dollars on redoing a building. And it says that 256 would give the state all the authority on the local health department. So that was the reason that I'm against it, and I really wanted to ask a question. Thank you, Senator. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against Senate Bill 256? The chair sees none. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection on adoption of the committee substitute? Chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there objection to agreeing the report of the committee, which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none, and the main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. What purpose does the senator from the 11th rise? Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Is it not true that the substitute greatly narrows the substance of this bill, and, and I think the senator from the 26 concerns uh, uh, are alleviated by the substitute? Certainly the senator knows of what he speaks. Have all senators voted? Have all senators voted? Hallways clear. Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 37, the nays are 14. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed by substitute. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of Senate Bill 213? Senate Bill 215 by Senator Harper of the 7th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 10 of Chapter 2 of Title 20 of the OCGA, leading to contracts and purchases by public schools so as to provide for payment on guaranteed energy saving contracts by local school systems using proceeds from local option sales, taxes collected for educational purposes and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Finance recommends that this bill do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Senator Huff Settler of the 52nd. Senate Finance offers the following substitute to Senate Bill 213, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 10 of Chapter 2 of Title 20 of the OCGA, leading to contracts and purchases by public schools so as to provide for payment on guaranteed energy saving contracts by local school systems using proceeds from local option sales taxes collected for educational purposes and for other purposes. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 7th to present Senate Bill 213. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, uh, Senate Bill 213 is a bill that, uh, uh, that I, I brought based on some conversations with a, one of my local school systems. It does a couple of things. It uh, clarifies and, and uh, conforms these energy saving contracts provisions under Title 20. It clarifies that you can use the, uh, the law, that you can use this method to, to finance projects. And in the long run, it allows school systems to save money. So. Uh, if there are no questions, Mr. President, I will yield the will. You have no questions. Thank you, Mr. President. Appreciate your support. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against Senate Bill 213? Chair sees none. 
The questions on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection to adoption of the committee substitute? Chair hears none, and the committee substitute is adopted. Is there objection to agreeing the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none, the report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none, and the main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 51, the nays are 3. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed by substitute. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of Senate Bill 237? Senate Bill 237 by Senator Harbison of the 15th and others. It builds to be entitled an act to amend code section 40-2-86 of the OCGA relating to special license plates promoting or supporting certain worthy agencies, funds, or nonprofit corporations, which proceeds disperse to the general fund and the agency fund or nonprofit corporation so as to establish a specialty license plate supporting members of the United States Army Rangers and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Veterans, Military, and Homeland Security recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Kirkpatrick of the 32nd. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 15th to present Senate Bill 237. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Senate Bill 237 is a, an effort to assist our veterans, our Army Rangers. Um, as I mentioned uh, several times, uh, Colonel Bob Portishev in Columbus, Georgia, also a member of the Rangers, uh, approached me a couple of months ago, a couple of years ago, I believe, and uh, asked for this consideration, and this is an effort to give them a special license plate that support members of the Army Rangers. The funds raised by the sale of this special license plate will be distributed to the National Ranger Museum Foundations. And I submit this to you as a worthwhile piece of legislation to commemorate and assist our veterans and their esprit de corps and efforts to uh, serve themselves. You have there a no question? question. Yes, Thank sir. you, Mr. President. Chair, I yield the well. You do have a question, sir. Yes, sir. Chair recognizes the majority leader to your left. Yes, sir. Thank you. Would the senator yield? Yes, sir, Mr. Ranger. Do you have any Ranger units in your district? I, I, plenty. Yes, sir, plenty. Is the regimental headquarters in your district? Absolutely, yes, sir. Is 1st Ranger Battalion in your district? I believe that's true. I'm not sure, but I believe that's true as well. Is the Ranger, Ranger Training Brigade Ain't in Ain't no district? doubt about it. Yes, sir. Thank you for bringing Ranger. this bill. And I thank you for your assistance in this matter as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader. You have no more questions. Thank you. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against Senate Bill 237? Chair sees none. Is there objection agreeing the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine.
Have all senators voted? Have all senators voted? Not all senators have voted. Now they have. Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 54, the nays are zero. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of Senate Bill 98? Senate Bill 98 by Senator Beach of the 21st and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 32 of the OCGA relating to highways, bridges, and ferries so as to provide for eligible expenditures for the Georgia Freight Railroad Program of the Georgia Department of Transportation to provide for procedures, conditions, and limitations for public and private financing of projects and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Transportation recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted, Senator Gain of the 47th. The Senate Transportation Committee offers the following substitute to Senate Bill 98, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 32 of the OCGA relating to highways, bridges, and ferries so as to provide for eligible expenditures for the Georgia Freight Railroad Program of the Georgia Department of Transportation and for other purposes. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 21st to present Senate Bill 98. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. I come before you today to uh, to present Senate Bill 98 dealing with freight and logistics. As you know, uh, the Senate has led on transportation since 2015 with House Bill 170 and the Transportation Infrastructure uh, Funding Act, which made that a priority. Uh, and it really has made us the leading uh, state in the country when it comes to capital investment and infrastructure. And then in 2018, we passed House Bill 930, creating the ATL, addressing a very fragmented transit system. And now we have a seamless, efficient, clean, and most of all, safe transit system across jurisdictional lines. And I come to you today, we will continually have issues on transportation, but the final big issue that we really need to address is how we move freight through our state. We're blessed with several economic engines, agriculture, Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport, the World Congress Center, and the Savannah Port. For the past two years, former Chairman Tanner and I led a two-year freight and logistics commission to address the issue of moving freight and products through our state. I want to thank the Senator from the 25th and the Senator from the 51st for serving on those, that committee. I'll just quickly run through a couple key findings. One, 83% of our freight coming out of Savannah is on trucks. The port is growing double digits. Even with COVID-19, we grew at 16.6%. We need to continually invest in intermodal and rail. One rail car equals 3.5 trucks off our roads and bridges. Uh, the shortage of truck parking, that became very interesting. And then the final thing that we found was e-commerce. Uh, in 2019, we had $2 billion of e-commerce days. We had over 130 since COVID-19 in a row of $2 billion in revenue. E-commerce is not going away. Quickly, this. This uh, bill will improve the state's ability to improve infrastructure and logistics, expanding our P3 programs. Uh, it expands CERTA's role in dealing with P3s. It also makes the planning director and the GDOT commissioner ex officio members of the Port Authority, which is very uh, critical for us to obtain private infra uh, infrastructure investment. Mr. President, members of the Senate, I that concludes my presentation. If no questions, I'll yield the well. Senator, you have no questions. Thank you. I would appreciate a yes vote. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against Senate Bill 98? The chair sees none. The question is on the adoption of the committee substitute. Is there objection to adoption of the committee substitute? Chair hears none, and the committee substitute is adopted. Is there objection agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none, and the main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine.
Have all senators voted? Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 53, the nays are 1. This bill, having received the records of the Constitutional Majority, is therefore passed by substitute. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of Senate Resolution 102? Senate Resolution 102 by Senator Gooch of the 51st and others, a resolution creating the Georgia Commission on E-Commerce and Freight Infrastructure Funding and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Transportation recommends that this bill do pass, respectfully submitted, Senator Ginn of the 47th. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the majority whip to present Senate Resolution 102. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me remove my cover. The uh, senator from the 21st just presented a very important piece of legislation dealing with freight and logistics. And as he said so eloquently from this podium, we have been working on this issue for several years now. Transportation is one of the most important things that we do as a General Assembly, something that we can do in a bipartisan manner. Democrats and Republicans tend to come together on this issue more than any other issue we deal with down here because it's important to move goods and, and services, commerce, and people. And uh, we've spent a lot of money the last few years since 2015. We've spent billions of dollars in transportation. It's not hard to find a project today. It's under construction. There's roughly 250 different contracts that are issued for road work. But we need to continue to move that needle farther and farther. And that work continues on with freight and logistics. The uh, study commission that was put together two years ago by the previous chairman from the 21st and the chairman in the House made great strides and made great progress, but we have more work to do. And so this resolution is simply an extension of that work that we began two years ago. We will run through the, the remainder of this year through December 31st, visiting portions of the state, talking about the importance of goods and e-commerce uh, this issue came to the surface even more so last year during the pandemic when people were stuck at home, weren't allowed to, uh, to get out and work and shop. So they've turned to the economy to be more internet based, which required more trucking and deliveries. And we know we have some uh, challenges ahead of us, may not solve them all this year and next year, but we're going to continue to move the needle on that. So I would urge you to, to vote favorable toward this uh, continuation of this freight and logistics commission. Mr. President, I'm sure if there's no questions, I would encourage you to vote for this resolution. Chair recognizes the senator from the 56th for a question. Thank you, Mr. President. Does the senator yield? I would be happy to. Senator, uh, isn't it true that Georgia has uh, two of the largest uh, and most efficient ports uh, in really the world? You know, that is a good point. We could spend in the next 30 minutes talking about the importance of our ports in Georgia and especially the Savannah port and the Brunswick port, uh, very important to our economy. Now we have the inland ports, as you know, up in uh, Murray County and a new one to begin in Hall County soon. Good question. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. You for one further question? I sure will. Senator, isn't it true that as uh, logistics continues to grow and people continue to buy more online, uh, whether they do it through our local merchants or uh, through national brands, that this will become even a bigger and more important issue for Georgia moving forward? That is an excellent question, and uh, I appreciate you bringing that to everyone's attention. Chair recognizes the senator from the 36th with a question. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator, you. Sure will, my good friend. S senator, I wondered if you were aware of a, a exciting and innovative logistics program that we're offering at Atlanta Technical College. Could you give us a couple minutes and explain it? Uh, it's uh, training people to be professionally qualified for commercial truck driving. That is an important part of our study that we've uh, been talking about in the, in the study committee for the last two years. Our trucking industry as a whole is looking for drivers. And uh, believe it or not, you can make eighty to $100,000 a year if you have a CDL license working in Georgia. That's right, and that's why we're hopeful for some state investment 
uh, in expanding that facility at a, for a very modest amount uh, because it is training people in Metro Atlanta for these high paying, greatly needed uh, commercial truck drivers. Well, thank you, for, Senator, for your commitment and your dedication to transportation investment in Georgia. Thank you for your effort you're, on this you're study. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Do you continue to yield? I will. Chair recognizes the senator from the 13th for a question. What, Senator, do you yield? I will. Isn't it true that in Crisp County, Georgia, we had the, one of the first intermodal ports designed and we're still going strong today? <clears throat> yes, sir, and that's an important part of our infrastructure uh, investment. Thank you. I appreciate this, yes, Bill. Yes, sir. You have no more questions. Thank you. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against Senate Resolution 102? The chair sees none. Is there objection agreeing the report of the committee which is favorable to the adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Questions on the adoption of the resolution. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the yeas, on the adoption of the resolution, the yeas are 54, the nays are zero. This resolution, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore adopted. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of Senate Bill 120? Senate Bill 120 by Senator Tippins of the 37th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 3 of Chapter 18 of Title 15 of the OCGA, leading to Solicitor General of State Courts, so as to provide for the Honorary Office of Solicitor General Emeritus, to provide for qualifications, to provide for certificate, and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Government Oversight recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Harbin of the 16th. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the senator from the 37th to present Senate Bill 120. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. It's my pleasure to bring a bill this morning that honors those who have served as solicitor generals in the state of Georgia very well. The state, the state courts of Georgia, there's 22 jurisdictions that have state courts, whereas in all of the counties, they're represented by a superior court circuit that's the chief prosecutor is a district attorney. The state court system, the chief prosecutor is a solicitor general. In the past, the uh, legislature has chosen to honor the district attorneys by creating the honorary uh, title of a district attorney emeritus. This bill reflects the current legislation for the DA, except it's changed it to include also the office of solicitor general. Those who qualify to serve in this office shall have served as a Solicitor General and have over 20 years of honorable service as a uh, prosecuting attorney, and they will have been honorably retired from that office. This, this bill has no financial impact to the state, either in retirement or other benefits. Mr. President, if there are no questions, I yield the will. I'll earn, uh, urge your support in honoring those who have served well in this office. You have a question from your seatmate back there. Chair recognizes the senator from the 46th for a question. I'm not sure he might need to tell me what the question is. Yes, well, sir. You all could have worked on this back there. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, will the senator who failed to 
discuss the bill with me before going to the well yield. <laughs> Could you clarify that? It's kind of mum it's you're mumbling. <laughs> it is early for us teetotalers, but uh, I just want to make sure, is this just putting the, the solicitor generals with 20 years of experience at the same, uh, give them the same honor that we do to district attorneys that are retired with that level of experience? That's correct. Thank you so you much have, for pointing that out. Could I, would you deal for one further question? Absolutely. Do you much. have a Cobb County uh, state court solicitor who's recently retired or deserving of this honor? Well, he has not recently retired, but he will be retiring. Uh, he's announced his re that he would not run for re-election. Mr. Barry Morgan has served well in at his retirement. He will have served for 24 years as Solicitor General of Cobb, and he's Thank done you. a great job. Thank you, Senator. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 19th for a question. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator, do you yield? Absolutely. Senator, is there any state dollar impact from this? This bill? Pardon? Does this bill have any impact on the state budget? Is there any state a dollar impact? Absolutely none. It doesn't affect retirement. There's no, no cost associated to the state. You have no more questions. The senator has yielded the well. Does any of the senator wish to speak for or against Senate Bill 120? The chair hears none. Is there objection agree in the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Check your machines. A couple of y'all haven't. There we go. Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 54, the nays are zero. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of Senate Bill 260 and the amendment? Senate Bill 260 by Senator Harper of the 7th, a bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 2-12-80 of the OCGA, leading to promulgation and adoption of rules and regulations and sharing of information so as to exclude certain soil amendments from regulation and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Natural Resources and the Environment recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted, Senator Harper of the 7th. Natural Resources and the Environment offers the following substitute to Senate Bill 260, a bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 2-12-80 of the OCGA, leading to progulation and adoption of rules and regulations and sharing of information so as to exclude certain soil amendments from regulation to limit locally adopted buffers and setbacks and for other purposes. Senator Harrell of the 40th and others offers the following Amendment 1 to amend the substitute to Senate Bill 260 by replacing line 19 with the following. Amendments derived from industrial byproducts generated solely from forest products excluding chemical byproducts of pulp digestion. And this completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 7th to speak to Senate Bill 260 and the amendment. Thank you, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate. Um, I bring before you Senate Bill 260. And uh, just to give you a little bit of history in, 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 the, in this bill and, and where we are and how we got here today, last year, 
those of you that were here and members of this body may remember House Bill 1057 uh, that we passed out of this body uh, and is, is subsequent, sub, has since become law, I'm trying to use bigger words than I, than I should, uh, has, uh, has since become law, but House Bill 1057 dealt with uh, an issue that has, has arrived, uh, that, that uh, arose out of uh, a particular part of the state in regards to soil amendments and, and waste products and waste byproducts and waste water, among other things. And um, what we did last year is, uh, in that process, is we allowed local governments the authority uh, to um, implement local uh, ordinances to regulate uh, where that product can be uh, disposed of as a soil amendment. Uh, and uh, just to, if, you, if you understand what those soil amendments are and how they're disposed of, you'll, you, it, it's kind of an uh, interesting process and in how they do that and the machines and the equipment that they use and in, in, in putting that out. Uh, but we understood the issue and making sure that we gave some, some local control in that regard and in, in, in allowing them to have that ability to uh, more aptly uh, control where those products went. What we did not do last year, uh, and, and I believe it was an oversight uh, in, two, in two provisions, uh, is we, by virtue of doing what we did last year, is we gave uh, local governments unlimited authority uh, to, uh, to set buffers as large uh, or as small as they would prefer. Um, and I, I believe that was an oversight. Uh, and this bill come through the committee that I chair, and, and, and I will take uh, some blame for that uh, in, in the fact that we did not uh, implement uh, some type of buffer uh, limitation. Uh, so the purpose of the underlying bill that you have before you, one of the purposes is to implement a, uh, a buffer limitation. Uh, and, and that way, because under current law, uh, if every all 159 counties decided to implement regulations, uh, you, we could exempt the entire state uh, from um, from the usage of soil amendments. Uh, now, uh, I think we all understand that in some cases there are uh, issues where uh, it, there there are things that. Um, we allow the regulators to do, and that's what the Department of Agriculture is there for. And we gave this authority to the Department of Agriculture to regulate. That was the purpose of 1057. Uh, and I think by implementing a, a common sense buffer and within those provisions, the Department of Agriculture will still have the authority to regulate uh, these assault amendments to, uh, to the extent that we allowed them under the law. And, and that's what we're working to try to do uh, with 1057 last year, and this is just cleanup language uh, for 1057 this year. So uh, basically, in regards to the buffer provision, uh, what we're doing is, is we're putting in a 100-foot limitation. So local governments will be able to do that up to 100 feet and 100 feet only. Uh, and, uh, and, and this will still allow this process uh, in, in to continue in our state with limitations and giving local governments some authority. When it comes to buffers, if you look at the law, there are a multitude of different buffers that we have in the law. Uh, we have 25-foot buffers, we have 50-foot buffers, and we have 100-foot buffers. Uh, it depends on where you are in the state, what, what, what part of the state that you live in. If you're in the, the senator from the 51st district, and, and when you talk about stream buffers and the buffers that they have uh, up there, which, uh, or, or if you're on the coast and you talk about the coastal buffers uh, around some state properties, around the marshlands. But when you really get to talking about buffers, in my opinion, you really, you really get to talking about private property issues and private property rights. And at the end of the day, that's what buffers uh, take away. When you implement buffers, you take away somebody's uh, right to use their property. And, and under the law, the way the code is written, local governments have unlimited authority to take away a private property owner's rights. And so what we're trying to do is use uh, a provision, uh, some examples from, the, from what we already have under code, which 100 feet being one of the longest buffers that we already have in Georgia law, uh, and given that uh, authority to local governments so we can balance the rights of both sides of the argument, the private, private, private property argument and the right of local governments to use uh, that particular provision uh, to make sure that their citizenry uh, is, is safe and, the, and, the, and that they can use it in a, in a, uh, in a way that is, that is proper. So it's a balancing act, and I believe that 100-foot buffer does that. 
uh, it balances all of that out. The other provision that's in the bill in regards to uh, forest products, you'll see that is an additional uh, part that we put in there this year. And, and the reason for that this year is because last year it was, I, I'll just, it was, it's another one of those oversights. You'll see in the language that last year we included, uh, but it shall exclude forest products. But we, miss, uh, we missed uh, the forest byproducts uh, whenever we put that language in there. Uh, and if you really get down to the nitty gritty of it, uh, no pun intended, um, it, uh, it, it, this is a provision under the Department of Agriculture and it's under the Department of Agriculture's regulatory authority. Uh, and, and it was uh, um, unintentionally left in there uh, that, that we did not put that in there because that doesn't necessarily fit within the Georgia Department of Agriculture's framework. Uh, that doesn't necessarily fit in what they do on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to uh, to regulating this as an industrial byproduct uh, classification, and this this is taken out to to fix that oversight because we were really going after a specific uh, a specific um, type of byproducts, the forestry industry not being uh, one of those, and. So we, we made sure to leave that out, but I, I do want to make it clear that as long as it is a, a byproduct that is not mixed with another uh, material, um, this, uh, this, this particular byproduct then would be uh, left under the law. Um, so that's what that provision is for. The second, the second section deals with uh, wastewater also and waste provisions. It, uh, it deals with uh, assessing a fee. It allows the, the board to assess a fee for continuing education courses. What this is for uh, is we have private entities and private companies that submit, uh, submit coursework for the board, uh, the licensees of the board to take those continuing education courses. There's just been an overflow of that to the board. Uh, and this just would allow them to assess a nominal fee uh, to, to be able to go through that paperwork. Uh, and, and that's what this particular provision does, and I hope you would support that. I do understand that there's an amendment from the senator from the 40th. I will, uh, I will say without being able to, to dig into this uh, a, a lot deeper than where we are right now, and based on the conversations I've had with, with some folks, I'm going to take this as a friendly amendment and continue to work with the senator from the 40th uh, going forward as we go across the hall to make sure that we uh, are addressing this. I don't, I don't think this gets to uh, the intent of what we're trying to do in the underlying bill, uh, and, and I'll take it as a friendly amendment. And, um, and with that, Mr. Mr. President, uh, if there are no questions, I'll yield the will. You have some questions. I'd be happy to take them. Chair recognizes the senator from the 25th for a question. To your right. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, senator, is this your first bill? It feels like it. <laughs> let me let me just uh, f further question too, Senator. I'll, I'll take it from my is this distinguished a, colleague. Is this a buffer bill that you're offering to us today? Well, it is a it is a bill that will try to restrict buffers to my good friend from the 25th. Okay, I wasn't clear on your explanation. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. that. Do you continue to yield? I'll yield, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the senator from the 36th for a question. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Yield. I yield. To the Chair of Natural Resources, uh, have you seen any of the disturbing uh, information that uh, has, has been circulated about uh, property owners not being able to even go outside their houses after some noxious uh, soil amendments are added to a, a property adjacent to theirs? Uh, well, to, to that point, I believe that was the reason we passed House Bill 1057 last year. Uh, but with the unintended consequences of the unlimited buffer provision, and that's what we're just trying to address, and I believe 100 feet uh, addresses that concern and also addresses the private property concern of the other individual. But doesn't the, doesn't the further question, if you will yes, accept it, doesn't the, don't property owners have some rights to not be aggrieved, to, ha to have the, the contaminants sp spread that, that are noxious and well, make it difficult for them to come outside their homes. That's, they're, they're, I mean, we have the names of the people, we have the pictures of the things that are being dumped and you're stripping out local control uh, uh, on, uh, on zoning and controlling something that can really be uh, egregious for property owners to have to put up with it. I, I, would, I would argue to, to your point, and I appreciate it, is, uh, 
is really, and I, I think that, that last year this, this General Assembly actually went a little further in, in my personal opinion than I think we should have. I think some of this could be handled in the regulatory environment, whether that be the Department of Agriculture or the EPD, Environmental Protection Division. I also believe that property owners and private property owners have rights to pursue if they, they so choose uh, in the court of law. Uh, there are options to those individuals to do so. I do not believe, though, that it was the intent of this General Assembly to give local governments unilateral, unlimited authority, and, uh, and it was an oversight, and, and that's what we're trying to address with this particular bill. And it goes back to what I said earlier. We're trying to balance the property rights of all those that are involved. It is a balance. Is there, is there a perfect answer? I don't believe that there is. Uh, I, I don't believe that there's, there's, uh, there's the best a number that we could reach. The state still has some authority in the regulatory process in this regard, even though that we're limiting the local government's authority to, to on how long, those, how big those buffers can be. Uh, so the state still has some say uh, well, in this process. Further question. Yes, ma'am. Um, local government is closest to the local people. Isn't that right? Oh, yes, ma'am. And, and therefore, one could expect them to be highly responsive to uh, the folks that elected them back home. Uh, and wouldn't it be a better option to let those local authority prevail instead of usurping it with state authority? Uh, that the local folks have far less ability well, to influence. To they can influence a local zoning board. Well, we've gave local governments an authority that they never had before last year. Uh, they still have that authority under this bill. This is an authority they didn't have prior to 2020. So we have given local governments an authority that, that never existed, that only the state had the ability to do. Uh, this just says that the local government can continue to have that authority within, con within certain confines, and the state can still, con still have regulatory authority in that regard to work with those local governments. And I would suggest that those local governments work with the regulatory entities if, if there continues to be an issue and they can help address it in that particular arena. Uh, further question, uh, this will be my last one. Okay. Are, are you aware that the Sierra Club and the Georgia Water Coalition uh, that ex extends all across our great state of Georgia uh, are very troubled by the impact that this bill would have? I, I, I'll take the, the lady's word at that. Thank you for entertaining my question. You have no more questions. I yield the will. Would appreciate your support. Thank you, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the senator from the 40th to speak to amendment number one. Thank you, Mr. President. This amendment just deals with a tiny part of this bill. Um, the chairman is correct. We passed a big bill last year, and this just brings part of it back. Um, I've enjoyed my work on the Natural Resources Committee. I learn a lot, and I've learned a lot from the chairman. I have to say, though, that um, I, I had to get used to talking about soil amendments because at first I thought we were talking about soil amendments instead of soil amendments, and I wondered why is this legislature in the business of amending souls, right? But no, in all seriousness, I've learned a lot in this committee about soil amendments. The reason I brought this amendment forward is because there is, we are excluding industrial byproducts of forest products. Um, there is an industrial byproduct that comes through the digestion of pulp or paper that is toxic. It is called black liquor. And it has from time to time been found its way into our water and has contaminated our water. So I believe that the, uh, the industrial byproduct of pulp does need to remain as a regulated substance through the Department of Agriculture. If we exclude it with all other industrial byproducts of forest products, then my concern is that we are opening an unintended consequence for this black liquor to find its way into our soil and our water. So this is just a simple amendment to keep that particular industrial byproduct um, out of keep it regulated under the Department of Re Agriculture so it doesn't find its way into our water and soil. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Do I have any questions? You have no questions. Okay, thank you. I yield the well. Senator has yielded the well. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against Senate Bill 260 or Amendment Number 1? The chair sees none. We will take up Amendment Number 1 first. The question is on the adoption of Amendment Number 1 by the senator from the 40th. Is there objection to adoption of the amendment? Chair hears none, and Amendment Number 1 is adopted. Now the question is on the adoption of the committee substitute as amended. Is there objection to adoption of the committee substitute as amended? The chair hears none. The committee substitute as amended is adopted. Is there objection to agree on the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none. The main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill by substitute. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. Secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators vote? What purpose does the senator from the 20th rise? Parliamentary inquiry. State Mr. your inquiry. President. I'm curious why the senator from the 40th didn't bring her liquor bill last week. <laughs> That's twice in like a week I've been stumped up here. The gentleman speaks with great passion. Have all senators voted? Mr. Secretary, please close the machine on the passage of the bill. The yeas are 39, the nays are 15. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed by substitute. <laughs> Chair recognizes the senator from the 10th for a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate agree to the House substitute to Senate Bill 22. Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption? Senate Bill 22 by Senator Jones of the 10th, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act to provide for a new Board of Commissioners of Henry County approved March 28, 1974, as amended so as to provide a code of ethics to establish a Board of Ethics to revise the authority, roles, and responsibility of the chairperson, the board, and the commissioners, and for other purposes. The House offers the following substitute to Senate Bill 22, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act to provide for a new Board of Commissioners of Henry County approved March 28, 1974, as amended so as to revise provisions regarding vacancies on the Board of Commissioners and for other purposes. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 10th to speak to his motion. Thank you, Mr. President and members of this body. Um, Senate Bill 22, um, that uh, county that I shared with the senator from the 17th, we had to revise the charter for the Board of Commissioners. It was voted on unanimously by this body. There was a typographical error in the original bill that passed this chamber under the local consent calendar. We fixed that error over in the House. The House passed it this morning, and subsequently the bills have been transmitted back here for I agree. And I would strongly, strongly encourage uh, your support on this minor error that we had to correct in the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. If there's no questions, I yield well. You have no questions. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the motion? The chair sees none. For what purpose does the senator from the 17th rise? Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent to be excused from voting on Senate Bill 22 pursuant to Senate Rule 5-1.8D. Senator from the 17th is asked for unanimous consent to be excused from voting on Senate Bill 22. Is there objection? Chair hears none, and you are excused. All right, the question's on the motion that the Senate agree to the House substitute to Senate Bill 22. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The Secretary will unlock the machine.
Have all senators voted? Have all senators voted? Have all senators voted? Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the motion, the yeas are 53, the nays are zero, and the Senate has agreed to the House substitute to Senate Bill 22. What purpose does the senator from the 10th rise? Mr. President, I move that the Senate immediately transmit Senate Bill 22 to the House. Senator from the 10th is asked that the Senate immediately transmit Senate Bill 22 to the House. Is there objection? The chair hears none, and it is immediately transmitted. The chair continues to recognize the senator from the 10th. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate order Senate Bill 22 to be immediately transmitted to the governor. Senator from the 10th has moved that the Senate order Senate Bill 22 to immediately be transmitted to the governor. Is there objection? The chair hears none, and it is so. Chair recognizes, or uh, Mr. Mr. Secretary, will you please read the caption on Senate Bill 276? Senate Bill 276 by Senator Kennedy of the 18th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 15 of Title 36 of the OCGA leading to county law library so as to allow county governing authorities to authorize the charging and collection of law library fees in county records, courts, and magistrate courts, and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Judiciary recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Strickland of the 17th. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 18th to speak to Senate Bill 276. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, I want to talk to you about law libraries. Counties have law libraries, and they serve a fantastic purpose, not just for lawyers who need to go to the courthouse and research issues, but it's also the gateway for the public when they want an issue, when they have an issue that they're interfacing with our judicial system. As many of you know, we have a lot of folks that represent themselves. They represent themselves pro se. And in this process, they need access to legal journals, they need access to legal books, law books, the OCGA, the code. And that's where they go to the county law library for that purpose. So what's the problem? The problem is that with reduced filings across the civil um, practice spectrum for uh, filings in our courts at all levels, uh, the fees that are being collected that operate and pay for the operation of the law libraries are down. In fact, it's down to the point that there's one law library in South Georgia where they've had to terminate the services of the law librarian there that serves that purpose. So what does this do? So Senate Bill 276 simply provides that where the code, and if you'll look on line 11, it talks about how the code section accepts county, court, county recorder's courts and municipal courts from the requirement of charging and collecting additional cost. So those two particular courts are accepted from the requirement. They can opt in if they want to. But when the law was passed, and perhaps even by mistake, the uh, magistrate courts of our, of our state were not included in the list of courts that could, by operation of the ordinance or resolution, charge a filing fee in addition to what the other filing fees are. The maximum under the statute is only $5 per fee. And so this simply adds magistrate courts, which are identified really in this bill um, as magistrate courts, and also courts which are not courts of record, which is a magistrate court, from the requirement of charging and collecting the additional cost. So that's really all it does. And, and it's important for us to remember this is, not an, this is not obligating that fees be tacked on to filing costs. 
it simply allows the local folks to decide if they think that's an appropriate fee to add on to the filing fees at the magistrate court level. And that's really all it does. I'll be happy, uh, Mr. President, to answer any questions about this, but I will tell you that there are some, especially in the rural areas where the lifeblood of the courthouse many times uh, depends on the fees that are collected when folks have to file lawsuits. And that's how they pay for certain things such as the county law library, which I've, as I've already said, is important for the public's access to have information to make themselves available to the courthouse and avail themselves as other people do in the process. Mr. President, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 53rd for a question. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Yu. For my dear good friend, the rules chairman, absolutely. Let me ask you, why should the public buy books for lawyers? Why do they need a, a library? Why don't they have their own books in their own firm? That's a great question, uh, <laughs> Senator, and I'm so glad you, you brought up that distinction explaining why, in fact, that's not what this does. So lawyers do have those books in their offices and they pay for them. This is really available so that the citizens of the county and the other areas around can have access to those law books, particularly for people that can't afford lawyers. But I appreciate the question and the spirit of the question. You have no more questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. President, rather, I urge your support for this bill and, and thank you very much. I yield the will. Any other senator wish to speak for or against Senate Bill 276? Chair sees none. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. Questions on the passage of the bill? All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? All senators voted. The hallway looks clear. Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 40, the nays are 13. This bill, having received the records of the constitutional majority, is therefore passed. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, can you please read the caption of Senate Bill 238? Senate Bill 238 by Senator Strickland of the 17th, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 1 of Title 1 of the OCGA, leading to general provisions so as to provide provisions relating to enactment of the OCGA, to clarify the portions of the code which have the effect of law, to clarify the matter included in the code that does not have the effect of law, to amend Chapter 9 of Title 28 of the OCGA relating to the Code Revision Commission, so as to clarify the oversight of the commission with respect to the state content and for other purposes. The Senate Committee on Judiciary recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Strickland of the 17th. This completes the order, Mr. President. Chair recognizes the Senator from the 17th to present Senate Bill 238. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Senate, I bring you Senate Bill 238. As you all know, we have our Code Revision Commission that has members from the House and Senate on it, as well as some folks from the State Bar. And after every session, we have the code produced pursuant to a contract. If you go to our General Assembly website, that's where the public can pull up and see our entire code. 
There was a Supreme Court decision last year that created some confusion about whether or not we also contract to produce all those annotations. When you pull a code book, all those case law, the interpretations of our code, which is not our intent at all. So Senate Bill 238, our Code Revision Commission has asked us to clear that up and make sure that the only thing we produce um, as a state is the law itself. And the, the only thing that is the law is the actual code itself. And so that, Mr. President, I'll be happy to take any questions. You have no questions. Ask for favorable consideration. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against Senate Bill 238? Chair sees none. Is there objection or agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none. The main question is ordered. The questions on the passage of the bill. All those in favor vote yay. Opposed nay. Secretary will unlock the machine. Have all senators voted? Have all senators voted? Hallway looks clear. Mr. Secretary, please close the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 53, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. <laughs> Chair recognizes the majority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that we table the remainder of the Senate uh, rules calendar. The majority leader has moved that this body table the rest of today's rules calendar. Is there objection? Chair hears none, and the rest, the remainder of the bills on the rules calendar are placed on the table. All right, we're going to pump the brakes here and take a lunch break. Uh, lunch is being set up, as I understand it. I don't know what's being served, but uh, lunch is being set up right now. Um, so we will take a one-hour lunch break. A one-hour lunch break. We will be back at 1 o'clock. We will stand at ease. <laughs>